Hello, everybody. How's it going today? Happy Wednesday morning. We're talking more Seahawks. Specifically, we're talking DK Metcalf. And we're not really going to be talking about DK Metcalf, the player. We're not going to be talking about what he does on the field or what he's going to do on the field because I feel like there's not much to discuss anymore about DK Metcalf. There are only so many debates you can have about him. He's clearly one of the best receivers in the league. He's clearly a top three up-and-coming receiver in the league. He's clearly the most talented receiver the Seahawks have ever had, and looks like he's pretty easily on pace to be one of the best receivers we've ever had, period. So there's nothing to really debate when it comes to his game. Yeah, he drops the occasional ball. Yeah, his route running could be a little better, but you're not really losing anything with him in those terms that you're not also losing with guys like Tyreek Hill or Devontae Adams or whoever you think is the best receiver in the league. DK Metcalf is special, and we all want to keep him. So this video is not going to be about DK Metcalf, the player. This is about DK Metcalf, the inevitable contract extension, because we don't have to worry about this right now. DK Metcalf is stuck on his rookie deal for another year. We all know that. He cannot negotiate out of that rookie deal. He has to play it. And next year, if he has another big season, he's going to go out there and say, all right, give me my money. Even if he doesn't have a big season, he'll probably say, give me my money. And somebody, probably the Seahawks, but in theory, it could be somebody else, will give that money. But let's talk about exactly what that extension will be. Because even though we don't have to do this right now, we do have to think about it because we have to understand that DK Metcalf, who is currently making peanuts for an NFL salary, is going to be making a ton of money next year. And when we're handing out money right now, we have to understand, hey, we have this much money earmarked for DK Metcalf next year and for years after. So let's talk about what exactly that amount will be. Because I feel like I see a lot of people saying, oh, we can't do this, we can't sign that guy, we can't extend that guy, because we have to pay DK Metcalf $100 million next year. And I wanted to set the record straight on exactly what we may have to give DK, because this team, in my opinion, should take on more salary, get better players, make a big, definite, powerful push to winning the Super Bowl right now. And if that includes taking on salary, if that includes taking on long-term contracts... They can do that. I believe that they can do it. Some people seem to think that we can't do it because Metcalf is going to be so expensive. So let's see exactly how expensive DK Metcalf will probably be going forward. Okay, so before we get into that, though, I'll spend maybe 30 seconds on DK Metcalf, the player. He's amazing. He's great. He's incredible. He's been in the league two years. He's played in every game. He's got 140 catches, 2,200 yards, 17 touchdowns. Uh, his catch rate is a little low, but it's not terrible by any stretch of the imagination. And he's a big-time playoff performer. He's got over 100 yards a game through three playoff games, over five catches a game, three touchdowns across three playoff games. He He's done everything you could want a player to do so far in his career. So <clears throat> if there's any doubt, PFF will back it up as well. They gave him a grade of 82.7 for last year. This is an elite player who has every right to expect to make top dollar when he becomes eligible for an extension next year. Possibly he might wait it out and play his fourth year before getting an extension, but most of these players are not going to do that, and I wouldn't expect DK to do it either. So what we're going to do is the same thing that we did with the safety position when looking at Jamal Adams and Quandre Diggs. We're going to take a look at the way wide receiver contracts have evolved and expanded over the past seven years or so. And we're going to try to understand what the reasonable projection, the rational projection is for DK Metcalf's extension. Not this fan fiction of, oh, he's going to get $50 million a year because he has us over a barrel. That's not how this stuff works. He may have uh, us in a good position. He may have us in a good situation where he can ask for a lot of money. I'm not doubting that, but we can push back too. So let's go ahead and start with 2014 to show you guys what I'm talking about here. So in 2014, in that offseason, which wide receiver 
signed a contract for the highest average annual value because that's what we're mainly going to be looking at here average annual value the answer is brandon marshall at that point of the bears if you go down to 2014 on his spo track page he signed a three-year 30 million dollar contract 10 million a year average at that point during that offseason that was the most money per year any receiver in the league got 2014 the Highest average annual salary for a receiver, $10 million. We've come a long way, no doubt, but let's figure out exactly how far we've come. Now, keep in mind as we move forward that over these last several years, the salary cap has grown by about 10 to $12 million a year like clockwork. This year's the first year it went down, but we all know why. So with that in mind, let's plow on. All right, 2015. <clears throat> in 2015, which receiver signed the biggest contract? AJ Green. There was a big jump in 2015. He signed a contract that gave him four years, 60 million, average salary of 15 million a year. So, yeah, that's a big jump. That's a jump of 50%, and the cap only went up not even 10%. So, you usually won't see a jump that big, but this is certainly a sizable step forward for wide receiver salaries. Suddenly, the top dog was getting 15 instead of 10. That's a pretty big deal. Now, let's move forward to 2016 and take a look at the highest paid wide receiver that offseason. 2016 was kind of a weird year. In terms of average annual value, the highest paid guy was actually Alshon Jeffrey. But he got franchise tagged, and that's not exactly what we're looking for now, is it? He got franchise tagged, which gave him $14.6 million for a year, which is obviously really good and pretty close to what AJ got the previous year, but <clears throat> that's not exactly what these players are looking for. They're looking for long -term, um, <clears throat> a long-term security, and Alshon Jeffrey did not get that when he got franchise tagged. The, the, the full contract's guaranteed, but you get nothing after that, so... Yeah, this isn't exactly what we're looking for. What we're really looking for here is a multi-year deal, like, say, Doug Baldwin. The contract that Doug Baldwin signed in 2016 was actually the biggest average annual value given to a receiver that offseason. And it was actually a lot less than the contract that A.J. Green got the prior year. It was $11.5 million a year. So this was kind of a down year for big receiver contracts. A little bit of a blip on the radar, you could call it. Um, I, I wouldn't read too much into it, but in 2016, for whatever reason, no receiver signed a monster multi-year deal. It was actually considerably down from the prior year. Okay, now let's go to 2017 and take a look here. Antonio Brown. This offseason, he broke new ground by signing a four-year, $68 million contract, giving him an average salary of $17 million. And the previous record was A.J. Green two years prior, 15, so we see that slight bump. And it's a bump that is roughly commensurate with what you would expect, given the fact that the salary cap keeps going up and the value of the elite wide receivers in the league should continue to go up as well. So that's A.B. He signed a multi-year deal, a four-year deal, which is... Sometimes these guys get five-year deals, but for the most part, you're not going to see a deal too much longer than four years, especially because it seems like players prefer the shorter contracts these days because they want to hit the market again. But <clears throat> either way you slice it, $17 million a year is the new benchmark as of 2017. Okay, 2018. Who was king this year? Odell Beckham Jr. He signed a still-active contract that gave him five years and 90 million so this is one of those five-year guys um average annual salary of 18 million dollars to at that time stay with the giants he did not stay there very long he got traded pretty quickly but 18 million dollars a year for five years to stay with the giants that was the new gold standard for receivers at the time so we continue to creep up Okay, 2019, let's keep on going. Now we get into some more kind of, I would say, interesting contracts, right? Julio Jones. He signed a, as of right now, still active, three-year, $66 million contract. Average annual value of $22 million. Now, this is a little different, right? Usually these long-term extensions, 
like we saw the Brandon Marshall contract, right? That was uh, three years as well. But uh, it seems to me that, and, and we're going to see a more extreme example of this with the next player we look at. Once a player has already made his money, he's more willing to sign a shorter term deal for a bigger average annual value because he wants to hit the market again ASAP while he's still a viable top player. So Julio Jones at this point had already made a lot of money from his second contract. So when he signed this third contract, it was fat. Don't get me wrong. He set a new standard with the $22 million a year. But the fact that it was a three-year deal, I think, was... A, giving his team, the Falcons, a little bit of a break on the total contract value, and B, making it so he could have a chance at a fourth contract when he was still a decent player. Whether or not that will be realized, hard to know, but he's a special player, there's no doubt about it. Now, let's go to 20, um, this would be 2020, Uh, interesting wrinkle here with DeAndre Hopkins, he signed a two-year, $54 million extension with the Cardinals after getting traded. Now, the circumstances here are a little different, and that distinction needs to be addressed for sure. He was signing an extension on an already long-term contract that he had with the Houston Texans, and this was basically just tagging on a few extra years so he could have some long-term big money security. If you take a look at the Texans contract he signed, it was already giving him $16.2 million a year. He just signed this extension at the end as kind of a, you traded for me, show me that you value me kind of thing. Give me some longer-term security in exchange for acquiring my talents. So $27.25 and a quarter million a year is insane. And if Metcalf looks at this deal as sort of a baseline, that would be pretty crappy for the Seahawks. But I think we need to look at another contract to get a better idea of what the top of the market really looked like at this point. And that contract will belong to Keenan Allen. He signed a more customary four-year $80.1 million deal with the Chargers in the 2020 offseason. And this was just more of a um, plain extension. Now, at this point, Keenan Allen was another player who had already earned pretty decent money, but this was just another, okay, it's almost time for you to be a free agent. Let's go ahead and extend your deal. And he got over $20 million a year for four years, a legitimate $20 million a year player. So he wasn't the first, but he was along with Amari Cooper, the first to get a four-year-plus deal at the wide receiver position for more than $20 million a year. So definitely some big money here. You can see the incremental improvements in these long-term deals were up to past $20 million a year. Now, as for 2021 so far, the biggest receiver contract is actually Kenny Galladay, who took a small step down, and it makes a lot of sense why. He barely played, or well, he didn't play the full season last year, that's for sure. Uh, for the Lions, so he didn't earn that what possibly could have been a 22, 23, 24 million dollar a year, year deal. If he had played 16 games last year and put up monster stats, made the all pro team, he probably could have gotten that 22 plus, uh, 22 mil plus a year. Didn't happen. He ended up taking 18, which I'm sure he's perfectly happy with, but uh, he definitely left some money on the table with that. No other receiver was able to top that though. Um, It's worth noting that the cap did go down. I don't think that affected contracts for guys like this that much. It is kind of interesting to note that in the offseason, the cap goes way down. We we did see um, the the top receiver contract go down. But um, if you put all this together, and keeping in mind the fact that the salary cap's about to go up next year, and it's going to keep going up for some time, If I had to take a shot at this right now, with all the information we just sifted through, with all the contracts we just looked at, I feel like DK Metcalf will ultimately sign with the Seahawks. I do believe we will keep him. I know there are some people saying, are we going to be able to afford him or not? I'm pretty confident that Metcalf is not going anywhere. But um, as for an amount on that contract... Well, it depends on whether or not he wants the four years or the five years, but I'm going to say four years, 98 million, or 
five years, 120 million. It depends on if he wants that extra year or not. A lot of these players seem like they don't. So I would say four years, 98 million, that's 24 and a half million a year. So that would be a new record. That would be a new AAV record for the position. That would, well, no, it would not top the DeAndre Hopkins extension. But other than that, it would be the AAV record. And like I said, the DeAndre Hopkins contract was a little different. But um, yeah, it seems to me that as of last offseason, the elite free agent wide receivers were commanding about $20 million a year. Fast forward two years with the cap going way up, I feel like Metcalf can say I should get $25 million a year. And you give him a little bit of a discount because they're helping you out a year early because it beats the hell out of playing on your rookie deal. But I'm going to say four years, $98 million. And before we leave, let's remind everybody of the franchise tag, which we can use on DK Metcalf. There's no reason why we couldn't. And the franchise tag for a wide receiver is $19.2 million projected. It might go up a little bit. You could see it at $20 million, but the point is this. If DK Metcalf rolls into the offseason next year and says, I want $35 million a year or something stupid, you can always hold this stuff over, their he- over his head. You can always just say, you know, we can franchise tag you and you're stuck here playing on a one-year deal with no mo- guaranteed money after the season. And you know he doesn't want that. Nobody wants that. No player in the league is down with that kind of stuff. So you can give him more per year than the franchise tag, of course. He he deserves that. He deserves more per year than the franchise tag would give him for one year. No doubt. But if he goes too crazy, you can reel him back in with that. So current guess, four years, $98 million. I could see us knocking a little bit off of that. Maybe you see something like four years, 90 million. That's the lowest I would go just because he's still on his rookie deal for another year and he might give you a little bit of a break to get off that rookie contract. But that's my guess. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what your guesses are and let me know how you feel about this contract that is almost certainly going to happen. See you guys later today. Peace out. Go Hawks. Hey. We can afford some of these players, guys. I've been over the math before. I've made my projections before. But I say we can afford these guys. I say we can afford to bring in another player right now. I say we could have afforded the Julio Jones experiment. I say we could still afford a piece or two right now. We'll see if it happens, but that's my math. Let me know.